Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation. I just want to close the loop on my conversation with Tim Wildman, the president of the AFA, and Todd Starnes, the commentator for Fox News, on this demonizing of the American Family Association in the military in training sessions and using taxpayer dollars to do it. And as both Tim and Todd mentioned in our conversation, this is far from rare now. This is becoming, uh, I wouldn't say it's routine, but these are not isolated examples now. We're finding that this kind of demonizing of, of the AFA is kind of permeating these military presentations. And the very people that claim to be the voices of tolerance and doing this in the name of tolerance are turning out to be absolutely intolerant, the biggest intolerant bully bigots on the block, bigoted against groups that stand for classic Judeo-Christian morality and values and coming after the AFA. So it's a situation we're going to watch as Tim Wallman, our president, said, look, if, if the military doesn't take appropriate corrective steps here, it is possible that legal action may follow. You know, and it's an indication that we've got a commander-in-chief who is hostile to the Christian faith. I mean, this demonizing of Christian groups at lower levels in the military could only happen if these individuals knew they had tacit or explicit approval from those above them in the chain of command right up to the uh, Oval Office. So we are paying a very bitter price now for having a commander-in-chief who has an overt active hostility to the Christian faith. Well, speaking of hostility of another type, uh, we're all familiar with the stories of these barricades being, being put around these monuments, these memorials in Washington, D.C. And with us on our decision-maker line is Jim Stanley, who's the Director of Operations for American Family Radio. Jim, a welcome. Thank you for joining us. Where are you at, my friend? Well, Brian, right now we are in the mountains of Virginia, and I have to tell you, it is gorgeous. So after being in D.C. for the better part of almost a week for the Value Voters Conference and uh, then to participate in the March on the Mall yesterday. That was that was something I had never done in my life, but I can't think of a better time to, to have a little civil disobedience. Well, uh, Jim, I'm going to begin by playing a soundbite. It's a, it's a montage of two soundbites from Sarah Palin and Ted Cruz speaking at this rally. I don't know if you had a chance mm -hmm. to hear them. Did you get a I chance? Did. Okay, so you were there when they were when they said these comments, first Sarah Palin, and then Ted Cruz. This is a speech they gave at the barricades, and you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're calling these things. These are the not barricades, but the barricades, because President Barack Obama, Barry Obama, is responsible for these barricades being put in position. So here is uh, Sarah Palin, Ted Cruz, speaking at the barricades yesterday. Let's listen. We are here to honor our vets. You look around, though, and you see these barricades, and you have to ask yourself, is this any way that a commander-in-chief would show his respect, his gratitude to our military? This is a matter of shutdown priorities. Two weeks ago, the President of the United States signed a written veto threat. He said, if you open the memorial, I will veto it. Uh, well, you know, we should make him do it, but right now that bill sits on Harry Reid's desk, and Harry Reid will not even allow the Senate to vote. There are 14 bills sitting on Harry Reid's desk to fund vital government functions, to fund the VA. The Senate won't even vote to fund the VA. So that's Ted Cruz and uh, Jim Stanley talking here with our director of operations, Jim Stanley, who was at this march yesterday. Uh, so this really, when you listen to Ted Cruz talking about the Democrats and Harry Reid and Barack Obama shutting down the government, this this rally was about more than just the barricades around these memorials. Oh, it absolutely was. There were several impeach Obama signs there, but there was also several signs calling for prayer for America and prayer for our veterans and, and simply respect the vets was one of the common signs as well. And I think that's one of the things that they were really, really protesting against because right now, you know, the veterans are concerned whether or not their benefits are going to be there November 1st. 
that's him. another, as you know, is another deadline. Yeah, and you know, and Ted Cruz pointing out the only reason that these VA benefits have not been funded is because of the Democrats. The Republicans have sent a bill over to the Senate that would fund these benefits. Jim, we've got one of your pictures, and again, these are exclusive just to AFR. The only place you're going to see these is uh, on this broadcast. You can catch them on video streaming at AFR.net, both audio and video streaming are right there, AFR.net. And, Jim, we're looking at a picture. i got Colette in one of the pictures outside the White House there, and I'm looking. <laughs> this, this just cracks me up. I'm looking at all these barricades, Jim that are stacked oh, yeah. up in front of the White House. Tell us how that happened. Well, what began at the World War II Memorial ended at the Lincoln Memorial, and the barricades were still up at the Lincoln Memorial uh, when we got there. And the veterans decided that didn't need to be, so they carried them down and placed them on the grass. And then after folks visited the Lincoln Memorial for a while, and I've got a great picture of Abby there in front of, uh, of President Lincoln. And she has one of the signs that one of the guys took off of the barricade that, of course, set this area closed. Uh, so that was kind of neat. But anyway, so what they did is then the cry came out onto the White House. And these guys started picking up the barricades and taking them. And, by the way, Brian, they are calling them barricades, rocket caves, and several other kind of caves. But they wanted to make sure that the president had those in case he needed them somewhere else. So they delivered them <laughs> to the White House. <laughs> well, you know, it may be part of the symbolism there, saying, you know, if anything ought to be shut down here, maybe it's this White House. If anything ought to be barricaded, maybe it is this White House. You know, and Jim, I'm well, looking here at another picture you sent, another picture of, uh, of uh, Colette holding a sign there. And then there's a picture. This is hard to believe. you got these veterans. Some of these guys are in wheelchairs. Am I right? You had, you had guys yep. who were in canes. Uh, they are in wheelchairs. And yet we're looking at mounted police. What other tactics did they employ to to try to be an intimidating presence there? Well, I was going to tell you, after they stacked the barricades against the, the fence there at the White House, about a half hour later, police and riot gear showed up, and they began forcing their way through the crowd to line up directly in front of the White House and began pulling people off the fence that were standing there holding American flags and holding Marine flags and Air Force, Army, et cetera. Um, they were there, and it, it was an ultimate sign of disrespect. You know, Brian, uh, I believe it was last week that the uh, illegal aliens were there protesting, and they were given open access, but yet a, a police in riot gear show up from Department of Homeland Security, Park Police, and uh, Washington, the Metro PD showed up as well. And so they are forcing these guys who have given, you know, friends have given lives for their country. They were trying to keep them from paying respect to them. And then also pulling them down and, and in one case, taking the flag away from them. Wow. And using physical force to do it. So we got, we yes. got, we got the guys on the, the, the guys on mounted, they're on horses. So this is mounted patrols. I got their helmets right. on right. and, um, I'd read that there might have even been some kind of a helicopter kind of hovering over the over was, the mall. We're not sure exactly. I never could get a, a good enough glimpse of that helicopter to tell you exactly what it was. But Brian, you know how restricted that airspace is, so it had oh, to yeah. be something. You know, it had to be some kind of governmental helicopter because they're not going to let a press helicopter in there. Well, absolutely, uh, because way, especially proximity to the White House where you were, there's no way that there's going to be a any kind of an aerial vehicle up there that has not been approved and signed off by the Secret Service and every other agency of the federal government. By the way, the police took the barricades that were brought from the Lincoln Memorial and they began erecting those to establish a 10-foot perimeter. They also brought in some more. And so now you have veterans that can't even get, you know, as general visitors can, where they can have a picture or they can take and stand right there on the fence line. Uh, they separated them by 10 feet with themselves and their batons and pepper spray. And now, pepper spray wasn't used, but it was brought out because there were a couple that, when I tell you, they physically pulled them off the fence and they cast them down into the crowd. Mm, wow. We're looking here at a picture right now of the, the crowd at the Lincoln Memorial. You know, it's interesting, Jim, that I read this morning that those barricades are now right back up. They're back up in yeah, front of the are. Lincoln Memorial. They're back up in front of the World War II Memorial. You know, and to me, there's something, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but 
something childish about all of that, something kind of petulant and kind of peevish uh, uh, about just running right out and putting those barricades right back up. It's like kind of a kind of an in-your-face gesture to the American people. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that happened yesterday is uh, all, my family and I, we were approached by some tourists from Greece, and they are seeing this march headed towards the White House and these guys with the barricades up on their shoulders, and they're saying, can you tell us what's going on? Can you tell us what, what this is about? And so I had the opportunity to explain to them, and, and then there was a group of Japanese tourists that were following and falling in with the march as we went towards the White House. Hmm. Well, you know, you're right. Uh, Brian, you're absolutely right, though, in the childishness and, the, again, the ultimate disrespect. Because it's costing the president more money to keep the parks closed than it would be to simply open them back up. We know I was talking with Tim Wildman on a break. Uh, he was in here last uh, segment talking with Todd Starnes about that breaking story about the military demonizing the American Family Association. And, you know, we were just kind of speculating at the cost to the federal government to keep that helicopter in the air. We know the cost of operating other aerial vehicles, Air Force One and all that, and I'm sure this wasn't anywhere near that expensive, but... Those are expensive machines to operate with the pilots and the fuel and the maintenance and all that. Uh, so obviously they're spending way more money to keep these things closed down than they would by just leaving them open. Well, Jim, uh, we got about uh, 30 seconds. Any last word about the sense from the crowd? What were you picking up from the crowd that was there? I think that these guys want change. The men and women that served our, in our armed forces, they want change, and they want to be recognized for the sacrifices not only they but their families and, of course, their comrades made. Well, thank you, Jim. Our guest has been Jim Stanley, Director of Operations for American Family Radio, calling us from some idyllic spot in the mountains of Virginia while the rest of us toil away inside the dungeons of American Family <laughs> Radio. So, Jim, appreciate you uh, taking time to be with us. God bless you, my friend. All right, and, God bless. Thanks and, for having me. And drive safe. All right, Jim Stanley uh, uh, on the scene yesterday when these rallies happened as the vets stormed the barricades. Focal Point AFR Talk, if you'd like to join the conversation, 888-589-8840 is the number, 888-589-8840.